So we're here at TCU Press with Robert Seltzer, and uh, he's going to talk a little about his wonderful book, Amato, Murrah, and Me. Can you tell us a little about how you came to write this book? Well, ever since I was a young man, I had always wanted to write a book about my dad, and specifically about my relationship uh, with my dad. And I started writing it when I was around 28. <laughs> I finished about three chapters, which I was actually quite pleased with. But I realized that after those three chapters, my creativity was spent, mm -hmm. just exhausted. <clears throat> and the main problem that was that I was gripped by this paralysis. I wanted to be as good as my father. I wanted to reach the same lofty standard that he did. And I just realized that I couldn't do it. So I just abandoned the project for decades. <clears throat> and it's about 20 to 30 years later, that shows how old I am, uh, I decided to give it another try. <clears throat> and I discovered that I had packed away those three chapters and I found them. And I'm so grateful that I did because, as I say, even though, even though I was stricken with this fear that I could never reach my dad's standard, I was actually pleased with those chapters. And if I hadn't found them, I don't know if I could have started again. But I did find them, and they served as the launching pad for the rest of the book. And I started in earnest in about 2005. It might seem that it took me about 11 to 12 years to write it, but that's, that's not really true. Uh, every time I thought I was finished, I would add another chapter, and then another, and another. And I'm glad I did because the book evolved into something that even I wasn't expecting. <clears throat> and I think it lent depth to my father's uh, personality and motivation. And in fact, what I consider to be the key passages in the book, I didn't write until the very end. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I did because I, I think they uh, serve as the spine of the memoir. And if it weren't for those passages, <clears throat> I think uh, the portrait of my father would have been much more shallow and less illuminating. That's great. <clears throat> can you tell us a little about your father and your relationship with him? I can. Uh, my dad died when I was 16. It was uh, the start of my senior year in high school. <clears throat> and previous to that, I'd ra had a rather uh, turbulent relationship with him because I was filled with the rebellion that grips a lot of adolescents. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I hated the things about him that I would one day come to embrace. And I guess <clears throat> about three or four months before he died, <clears throat> I shed this hostility toward him. And thank God I did because if I hadn't, I think I would be stricken with guilt for the rest of my life. Uh, but I did shed that hostility, and I'm grateful to this day that I did. You know, he was a very, very complex man, and I don't think I truly became uh, accepting of him and understanding of him until I started writing this book. And then it was almost an epiphany. I, I truly embraced him and what he stood for. 